what is Japan trying to do? Looks like they're trying to intervene just like they did with the Turkish Lira. Speaking of which, check out the Turkish Lira. Shorted from 85.35, oil had a solid jump today, nearly a dollar. That's pretty good. Silver was shorted. Here's the signal I mentioned. 2709, as you can see, here's the 2709 point. Euro? See, just like I said, nothing much is happening there. It's pretty important. But now, let's tweak the channel a bit. The euro's stuck in this super wide sweeping channel. Honestly, I wouldn't even bother touching it right now. See this level we're talking about? It's irrelevant. Like, it's not even a thing anymore. We have to keep a super close eye on how the euro plays out. The dollar's been tanking hard lately. This is why it's crucial to see how currency pairs stack up against it. Same old advice, especially in Forex. Stick to the really strong assets, the super solid levels. Trading those strong levels is a must. If you trade intermediate levels or try hoping onto the hourly chart, you'll just get chewed up and spat out. Volatility is through the roof here. Take a peek at your stop. One misstep and you're done for. We're talking a 40 pip stop here. So when you see things are quiet for the day, just take my advice. Don't even bother with short time frames. All right, let's keep it moving. NZD, not much happening there either. It is just chilling in its wide channel, you know? These assets are all over the place, thanks to the wild swings of the dollar. So like I said, tread carefully. Now let's talk about the Japanese yen. Take a good look. Almost no rollbacks, right here. It gave a solid 1,000 points. Yes, 1,000 points with just a 25 yen stop. That's a sweet 40 to 1 ratio. I mean, seriously, 40 to 1. Even if you got stopped out somewhere along the way. From here to here. From here to here. Still a cool 20 to 1. And JPY? You see what Japan's up to, right? They're trying to intervene and stir things up, just like they did with the Turkish Lira. Speaking of which, check out the Turkish Lira. That's why I'm not diving into the Japanese Yen just yet. They're tinkering with it too, attempting to intervene. Now, we're looking at a drop in volatility. So, it's time to switch gears to short time frames. See, here's the Japanese Yen. Parabolic rounding. Looks ripe for a short. Could bag you a solid 100 points there. Gorgeous parabolic curve, right? We might be a tad late to the party. But hey, there's some serious volatility during interventions. And honestly, I think the Japanese Yen's headed south from here. So, let's keep it moving. AUD. Not much is happening there either. Now, let's talk about the Swiss franc. You see, it's got some serious resistance up ahead. I mean, just look at the monthly charts. It's got all these levels that I wouldn't even touch. So yes, the Swiss francs has got a tough resistance ahead. We'll have to wait and see how it plays out. You can draw a new level here. Oh, and check out GBP. They're all starting to act like the good old American dollar. Yeah, the dollar's got that high volatility, and now they're following suit. All right, moving on to CAD. Nothing much is happening there. We've basically entered a paranormal bar. Now let's talk about oil. By the way, I hit it big with oil today. Short from 85.35, oil made a solid move, almost a dollar. That's some good stuff right there. About six to seven to one ratio. All right, let's not forget about ETH and BTC. Did a review on those already. I still reckon BTC entered a serious short zone and chances are it's going to keep heading south. That's just my two cents. And naturally, if BTC goes down, it's probably going to drag a bunch of altcoins down with it. So keep an eye out. All right, take a peek and you'll notice we're slowly inching down below that level. So it looks like BTC is on its way down. All right, moving on. Let's talk about gold and silver. I had a silver signal too. Silver was available for shorting. Here's the signal. 27.09, just like that, you see? 27.09, that's some solid movement right there. Almost a 4% swing for silver. That's significant. Gold, well, it has pretty entered that short zone now. But you know how it goes. When the market gets all heavy, it's tough to trade those signals. Honestly, I was expecting gold to keep on sliding. All right, let's talk about S&P. It is still trying to find its footing. You see, the levels are holding steady. I'm not budging on those. We're in a pretty wide accumulation zone. Let's see how S&P handles it. All right, next up, Polish Zloty. Not much is happening. Your CAD, same deal. 
GBP NZD pulled off a sweet false breakout. GBP JPY. Nothing to write home about. Now, what's going on today? SPY is taking a tumble. SPY is down. Nvidia is down. Meta is up. Man, it's tough, really tough to trade these kinds of scenarios. Tesla, you see, is starting to pull back. But that's normal. It shot up real hard. They practically squeezed the short sellers dry there. The market, you see, it moves in all directions. So when I see green and red, it's hard to trade it. See, this situation looked like a short one, but we went long. It wasn't even a short, you see. In other words, the market just needs a bit of time to sort itself out. Oh, and AMC, by the way, is a prime short candidate. I'd keep on shorting it. I mean, I thought AMC was headed for bankruptcy. Watch closely. I think AMC is heading straight for bankruptcy. So, yeah, you can keep on shorting AMC. I mean, if you look at a bunch of assets, you'll always find opportunities in the market. So if you keep doing your homework every day, you'll be golden.